star of Nitique, Edward St. Pei. Well, thank you, everyone. Welcome to Nitique, and also thank you to the Nitique dancers. Well, Donald Trump is still making news. He has warned if he arrives at the GOP convention with the delegate lead and is denied the nomination, there could be riots. Have you ever seen a Republican riot? Picture thousands of Episcopalians and Methodists storming up the 18th fairway behind the final twosome at the Masters Tournament. <laughs> That'll sort of give you a picture of what's going to happen at the convention. Well, Hillary Clinton made more news last week. She appeared in last week's episode of the Comedy Central show Broad City. Not to be outdone, the next Donald Trump rally will be at the top card of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. <laughs> Big news from Vermont. Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream of Vermont introduced a new ice cream which honors Bernie Sanders' presidential bid. It's called Bernie's Yearning. It's half chocolate and half mint. The ice cream sells for $3.99 a pint, $600 after taxes. <laughs> from the White House, President Obama passed his final White House physical with flying colors. It showed he lowered his resting heart rate, lowered his blood pressure, and lost five pounds since last year's physical. It's amazing when you consider the stress he's under from his 72 whole work week. <laughs> from North Korea, North Korea launched its first submarine, which immediately sank with all aboard. But Kim Jong-un vows he'll try again. You know, his favorite book is 20,000 Basketball Leagues Under the Sea. <laughs> Several airlines are planning on introducing a new economy minus class for passengers, which is pretty much the same as economy class minus the last shred of human dignity reserved for people who can still afford coats. <laughs> Barbie the doll has turned 57 years old. It's a landmark achievement. Over the years, Barbie has evolved. Now we have a full-figured Barbie. We have a short Barbie and a tall Barbie. Now, at 57, we also have a hot flash Barbie. <laughs> a report says that Spanish wine is now the most popular wine in the world. Apparently, it has something to do with the fact that it must have a real kick if it's strong enough to make middle-aged men run through the streets being chased by bulls. <laughs> From New York, a waiter in Brooklyn, New York, International House of Pancakes, was arrested for not charging his customers for beverages for the last six months, he told police he considered this foreign aid. <laughs> Funding has been cut to the Los Angeles coroner's office and dead bodies are piling up in the hallways. It's gotten so bad, Angelinos can have their cable TV completely installed in their house before the coroner arrives to pick up the dead bodies. <laughs> The State Department issued a stern travel bulletin to American college students going south for their spring vacations. The U.S. government is warning spring breakers about the danger of Mexican drug gangs. They say that to avoid any trouble, young people should stay out of Los Angeles. <laughs> well, big news from the NFL. The Cleveland Browns cut Johnny Manziel after only two seasons. One alcohol rehab, a charge of domestic abuse, and countless social media photos of this young man swigging champagne and snorting cocaine. He must now wait five years before he's eligible to be elected into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> now, speaking of rock and roll, tonight on Nitique, we meet two rock and roll greats. First, Mr. Jimmy Mays has toured with blues greats like Little Walter, Jimmy Reed, and Pine Top Perkins. He's back. Marvin Gaye, and worked with Jimi Hendrix on four albums. We'll meet Mr. Jimmy May tonight. Also on tonight's show, Tony Pasco, the Chicago native that writes the music for Duck Dynasty and many other TV shows you know and love. Aside from his career as a writer of television music, he's a performer and a rocker in his own right, and he's with us tonight. We'll hear him, we'll interview him and hear him play in our studio. So stay with us for this edition of Nighty. We'll be right back with more of Nike after these messages. This is our Graze Box. It's a great way to snack. Fresh, tasty, and created using only the best ingredients. Choose from our range of over 90 delicious snacks. We'd like to invite you to try a hand-picked box for free. Go to graze.com and we'll send a free box directly to your office or home. It may even help you keep your hand out of the cookie jar. 
Go to Graze.com and enter the code Graze34 for a free box. Graze.com. Snacking. Reinvented. That used to be me, standing in line to get my money and paying my bills with cash. Now, I save time and money with my NetSpend prepaid MasterCard. It works better for me than a traditional bank account. There's no credit check, so approval is guaranteed. I just load it with my money. Or with free direct deposit, I can get my paycheck or government check up to two days faster. They even send me text alerts after every purchase, or I can check my balance online anytime. Call 1-877-893-6856. And now back to more Night Chief. Well, I'd like to introduce Mr. Jimmy Mays. Mr. Jim, thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. You know, uh, we mentioned at the top of the show when we were doing the open that you go all the way back to the Motown days and we got to mention Jimi Hendrix too. Yes. Uh, when you played uh, with the Motown artists, uh, there was a certain beat that the Motown wanted you to do. That was the Motown backbeat, right? Yes, I'll tell you a little story about that. We were in Pittsburgh and somebody knocked on my door, the leader of the contours, he said, Martha want us to show you the Motown beat and they took me to the rehearsal. Stephen Wonder was there and Marvin Gaye was there to teach me that Motown beat. And, and that was something that was in a lot of the Motown music, that, that beat, right? Yeah, you could listen to it, but it was different when you were playing it live. It was a certain beat that Motown had. So Marvin Gaye, you, Work with Marvin Gaye, what was he like? Big, tall guy, a lot of fun, tell a lot of stories. He would always ask me what was the guys in New York saying about him, and he was a superstar, but he was a, a gentleman. Was he a gentleman? Class act. And he was a drummer, too? A drummer and a piano player. And a piano player. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when we go to the break, when we come back, we're going to have the drum set up. Maybe you can show us uh, a demonstration of the Motown backbeat. That's exactly, I love to do it. And now also another technique that was used in a lot of the blues material, you play with Jimmy Reed and other great blues artists through the years, it was the blues shuffle beat, right? The blues shuffle art started with Lil Walter and graduated Jimmy Reed, all the blues guys. And you had to have that shuffle, that mellow back shuffle so the blues singers could sing. So you had to have that shuffle behind them. And uh, your career began when you left high school and you went straight to Chicago. Straight to Chicago, but I was playing in the juke joints here in Jackson, and this is where I learned the shuffle, right here in Jackson, Mississippi. So you grew up in the deep south in Jackson, Mississippi. Jackson, Mississippi. But uh, out of high school, you went straight to Chicago. Did, Couldn't did, wait to get to what, Chicago. How, what was a young person like yourself doing in Chicago? How would you be able to play in the nightclubs when the age limit was 21? I would slip in the clubs and they would see me and put me out. So eventually they would let me play, but I had to go to the office on the breaks. I couldn't sit out there with older people. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got with little Walter. Okay, now the website for more information about what you're doing, let's put it up on the screen, deltablues.com, mississippideltablues.com, and that's where you can find material uh, related to your career and also your record uh, and your book. Let's talk about your book, Yes. Your book is on Amazon.com, Amazon right? Amazon right now. It's all over the world. It's called The Amazing Jimmy Mays, Side Man to the Stars. Side Man to the Stars. Speaking of Side Man to the Stars, let's talk about Hendrix. Your relationship with, with Jimi Hendrix, you had a friendship with him even before he became famous. Yes. Uh, this group, Joey D and the Starlighters, we needed a guitar player. So I went up and down Broadway, all over New York, Harlem, and then this guy told me about a guitar player that was playing with the Isley Brothers. And I stole Jimmy from the Isley Brothers and got him an audition with Joey D and the Starlighters and Joe hired him. So in essence, I helped Jimmy Hendrix get a job. And <laughs> when he went on, and of course we know the story of Jimmy Hendrix, you guys reunited again for more studio work where y'all, you produce various records and such as that. Right. Uh, I ran into Jimmy one night and this chick told me, she said, there's Jimmy Hendrix. I said, Jimmy who? Because I knew him as Maurice James. So when I tapped him on the shoulder, he picked me up and hugged me. And he said, man, I'm with these people, but I'll get back to you, give me your number. I said, oh, they're going to brush off. 
Three days later, I got a phone call, and this thing, I know I was in the studio with Jimmy recording. In New York. My old buddy that was a superstar now. And he he could have had any drummer in the world. Purple Haze and all that was red hot. And he let me, he chose me to play the blues with him. What's uh, a fond memory you have of your time playing with Jimi Hendrix? Give us a, give us a, a little uh, insight. Yeah, well, we used to have competitions with the girls. And once in Syracuse, New York, he had got up and we couldn't find him. He had took a cab and went to a different part of the town to get his hair done. So everybody blamed me. And Jimmy made it just in time because everybody was hollering and screaming at me. But well, why is it you brought him into the group? That's just one of the memories, but it's so many. All of it's in the book. Okay. Jimmy May's Sideman of the Stars. It's mm -hmm. on Amazon.com. Right. And it's your recollection of all those great days and many more great days ahead. Mr. Jimmy Mays, thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you. It's a now, stone pleasure. We've got uh, some musical uh, elements coming up with you. And then uh, a young man, Tony Pasco, a rising blues artist, a rock and blues artist, will be joining you for uh, some uh, blues music. I think you're going to do a Jimmy Reed song. Yes. Anything I do with the young kids, and I'm looking forward to playing with these guys. Thank you for being with us tonight. We'll be back with the performance after this. We'll be right back with more of Nighty after these messages. Ingalls Shipbuilding has pioneered the development and production of technologically advanced, highly capable warships for the U.S. Navy, Coast Guard, and Marine Corps for more than 75 years. Ingalls is Mississippi's largest manufacturing employer. And today, Ingalls has an immediate need for more than 200 electricians at our Pascagoula, Mississippi site. Apply today at www.buildyourcareer.com or call 888-935-1507. This is our Graze Box. It's a great way to snack. Fresh, tasty, and created using only the best ingredients. Choose from our range of over 90 delicious snacks. We'd like to invite you to try a hand-picked box for free. Go to graze.com and we'll send a free box directly to your office or home. It may even help you keep your hand out of the cookie jar. Go to graze.com and enter the code GRAZE34 for a free box. Graze.com. Snacking. Reinvented. And now back to more Night Chief. Well, Mr. Jimmy Mays with us. Mr. Mays, thank you for coming. It's thank really you. an honor to have you here with us with your history of playing with some of the greatest musicians of all time. Yes, well, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I want to demonstrate for the TV audience all different kind of techniques on the drum. Okay, first off, there was a a particular backbeat that Motown used on many of the records when you play with Marvin Gaye. Could you give us a demonstration of that? Yes. Okay, now that's the Motown backbeat and that was Martha Vandella Marvin Gaye, all of their artists, there was a, that, that was the sound. Right, that would fit in with the bass player, and that's how that was that pulse that you felt for Motown. Okay, when you played with the blues fellows, like Jimmy Reed and such, there was something called the, 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 the blues shuffle, right? That's right, blues shuffle. Okay and the Jimi Hendrix uh, experience. When you played with Hendrix, now you played on four albums, four, four record uh, sessions with him. You were at, uh, in New York with him at the Electric Lady Studios, I believe, right? No, we recorded at the record plant. At the record plant, okay. Tell us about that experience. What was it like as a person? I mean, what, what was Hendrix like to work with? I knew uh, you knew him before he became famous and then after he was already famous, then you worked with him again. What was he like to work with? He was fun to work with until you get in the studio. Then he was dead serious. But live sessions that we played, traveling the night clothes and everything, him clowning was beautiful. But you had to be real quiet and pay attention in the studio. What would, what would happen in the studio? I mean, what, what would he, what happen? You might get cursed out because <laughs> he was concentrating so deep on his music. Right, right. Uh, did y'all, uh, once you got into the studio, did you find yourself going throughout the night until the next morning? We would 
Back in the 60s, it was all fun. You started in the evening, and we would play till the morning. It would be daylight. Jimmy would just wear us out. He just had this energy. We would be beat out. He was just, really, let's do another track. Let's do another track. Okay, now, you mentioned uh, that there was a certain uh, uh, drum uh, beat that you did with uh, one of the songs you mentioned before. You, you want to do something for us? Yes, Let Me Move You, one I recorded with Jimmy. Okay, now, do you have any fond memories of your time playing with Hendrix? Uh, what, what, what stands out as a great memory? Oh, yes, well, one particular time we couldn't find him, and he had got a taxi and went into the different part of town to get his hair done, and they faulted me for that. They said, well, you brought him in the group. He's your responsibility. Like, you drove me crazy. So you got, you got good memories of the, your time with Jimi Hendrix? Oh, yes. Matter of fact, if you don't mind me mentioning, it's all in my book, Side Man to the Stars. Okay, tell us about the book. The book is available where? Uh, right now, you can get it easier on Amazon. Amazon, Side Man to the Stars. Side Man to the Stars. Mr. Jimmy Mays. Well, we're going to do a little more music. We've got the next generation of blues artists coming in. Mr. Tony Pasco will be joining you for another uh, session here in the studio. So stay tuned. We'll be back with more after this on Nitique. We'll be right back with more of Nike after these messages. Did you know home appliance and major system breakdowns cost homeowners an average of $1,700 per year? American Residential Warranty can help cover those costs with home service plans starting at less than a dollar a day. Plan options include coverage for central air, heat, and ductwork. Water heaters, interior electrical systems, and plumbing. Major kitchen appliances, and more. Call now. There's no obligation. But hurry, if you wait until you need a home service repair, it'll be too late. When you are looking to further your education, there's only one university that towers above the rest, Jackson State University. Jackson State University is one of the leading universities in research, technology, and innovation, graduating more than 1,300 students annually and a consistent growth in revenue. Jackson State University is ranked number one amongst the HBCUs in research and development. Make the right choice, the one choice, one Jackson State University. Changing lives, one student at a time. And now back to more Night Cheek. You got me running, you got me hiding, you got me running, hide, hide, any way you want, let it go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got me doing what you want me, baby, what you want me to do. You got me up. Yeah. 
We'll be right back with more of Nike after these messages. Ingalls Shipbuilding has pioneered the development and production of technologically advanced, highly capable warships for the U.S. Navy, Coast Guard, and Marine Corps for more than 75 years. Ingalls is Mississippi's largest manufacturing employer. And today, Ingalls has an immediate need for more than 200 electricians at our Pascagoula, Mississippi site. Apply today at www.buildyourcareer.com or call 888-935-1507. That used to be me, standing in line to get my money and paying my bills with cash. Now, I save time and money with my NetSpend prepaid MasterCard. It works better for me than a traditional bank account. There's no credit check, so approval is guaranteed. I just load it with my money. Or with free direct deposit, I can get my paycheck or government check up to two days faster. They even send me text alerts after every purchase, or I can check my balance online anytime. Call 1-877-893-6856. This is our Gray's Box. It's a great way to snack. Fresh, tasty, and created using only the best ingredients. Did you know home appliance and major system breakdowns cost homeowners an average of $1,700 per year? American Residential Warranty can help cover those costs with home service plans starting at less than a dollar a day. Plan options include coverage for central air, heat, and ductwork. Water heaters, interior electrical systems, and plumbing. Major kitchen appliances, and more. Call now. There's no obligation. But hurry, if you wait until you need a home service repair, it'll be too late. And now back to more Night Cheek. Mr. Tony Pasco from Chicago and uh, yes. playing around uh, the country. Yes, sir. Uh, the originator of the music, or one of the primary composers for Duck Dynasty's musical themes. Yes, one of the writers. Yeah, now, music writers. Sent, now, what was it like just now playing with uh, Mr. Jimmy Mays, one of the great drummers uh, of all time from the history of rock and blues and all that? How, what was that like? That was really cool. Thank you for that, actually. Oh, spontaneous and, and, yeah. jam session. And for having it, how gracious was that to have him yeah. let us just sit in and, and play like that? That is really amazing. So, okay, now uh, you uh, have been a musician and suddenly you submitted music to the producers of Duck Dynasty. Yeah. And they said, we like that. And now you are the guy on Duck Dynasty. What has that meant for you career-wise? What else is going on in the world of television and, te and writing music for television? Well, it grew. You know, um, it was through my record label. And, 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 and when, of course, when Duck Dynasty became a hit, people started taking notice of those things. So that show turned into two and three and four. And now, I, you know, I've done a little over 20 shows. Uh, you know, uh, Wahlburgers and Shark Week and Duck Dynasty and the offshoot. TV shows of, of those shows of, as well, and so I do. A, you know, it's grown into a cool little thing, a little niche that I've. You know, and and hopefully now from the TV thing, it grows into other things like documentaries and independent films. And, and so, like are you getting uh, requests to do the music for the films now? I am. I actually I had a a song that showed up in an independent film called Dear Dad that was on that was uh, premiered at the Sundance Film Festival. But that was just a song they chose that I already recorded, so I didn't write anything specifically for the movie. Now I'm getting asked, because I do kind of music bed things, hey, can you write something for a scene and, and those kinds of things. So, so they'll send you the that. scene, right? And you can look at the scene and write the music, yes. the, the, the emotions that come to you from seeing the video. Yeah, yeah, and which I don't get to do on the TV thing. Right. So I, I have no idea what scene my music's going to play on. So now that'll be nice to have a, a movie where they send me a clip and I can write something for it and, and get down what the tempo of the scene is and the, and the temperament of the scene. So, okay, what a great story. Now, if anyone out there would be interested in following your career or contacting you about projects they're doing, the website is TonyPasco.com, Yes, correct? yes, P-A-S-K-O.com. And they can and, reach you through there. Oh, yeah. My, you can get my website, um, everything that I'm doing, I've done. There's a form on there. If you want to hire me, I'm available. <laughs> so. Well, so when you uh, were very young, what prompted you to move into music and, and, and devote your life? You, your career has been music. Um, well, my, my dad brainwashed me at a pretty young age to, to, to do this as a living because he was a professional musician. And, of course... Um, I had access to those kinds of things. So it, it was very realistic for me as a, as a young kid seeing my dad do it. And of course, I was his roadie for many years and he was a professional drummer in, in Chicago. Did and, you see uh, any of the great blues artists in Chicago? Oh yeah, he used to take me to the Blues Fest. And that's where I think my appreciation 
um, for the blues and how it grew. We used to go to the Chicago Blues Fest every year, and I would see, you know, Mr. You know, Mr. Jimmy Mays playing, you know, and 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 seeing a lot of Bobby Rush and Muddy Waters, and and I didn't know who any of those people were, and my dad made them important to me. Yeah. And he would say, oh, you gotta listen to this guy, you gotta watch this guy, this is a big deal. You're that, getting that at, at nine years old. Or, Amazing, and what a great know, education. And Legends, Buddy Guy's place in Chicago used to have an open mic night once a month. And my dad used to take me. And I remember being a little kid and he would say, you know, that's Mavis Staples, you need to watch, she's a big deal. And I would see these people not knowing as a little kid, but he made it important to me. Now, a minute ago, uh, in the studio, you played with Jimmy Mays, yeah. and you had a partner up on the stage with you here yes. in the studio. Who was that? Timmy Seegers. I, and uh, I, I, do you perform with him regularly? I, we have a band together, and every Tuesday in Meridian, Mississippi, um, there's this little, little hamburger joint called Mugshot. Actually, it's a great hamburger joint in Meridian, Mississippi. And we do a Tuesday night there with our band called The Black Sheep. And Timmy and I, we just, we have all, it's all kinds of music. It's a lot of fun. We keep it light. You can come and have a beer, have a burger, listen to some music. You so know, you still play and you, you still play live, right? I try. <laughs> well, listen, uh, the Temple Theater, you'll be, you'll be performing there. And it's a legendary place. Everybody's oh, played yeah. in Meridian, yeah. Mississippi, uh, yeah. Elvis, among others. Oh, uh, huge, tell us yeah. about what, what you're doing and when that is. April 8th, we're doing what's called April Fest. And it's the first annual April, April Fest, and it's with this band, The Black Sheep, that we do the Tuesday nights. We've been asked to do more of a bigger show, so we have that and, and a couple other bands coming out for $10, April 8th, come out. I think we're gonna have beer and burgers again, and, and just kind of And that's the Temple fun. Theater at Meridian, Temple so Theater. you can Google Temple yeah. Theater to find Meridian, out more about Mississippi. that. Meridian, yes. Mississippi. Thank you, Mr. Tony Pasco. Appreciate it, We'll have you. you back soon. Keep Thank us you so uh, much. abreast of your career. Okay? Thank you so much. Okay, that's Tony Pasco. I'm Edward St. Pei. Thanks for joining us for Nike. Thanks for joining us tonight, folks. Join us every week here for Night Team.